All right, hope everyone's doing wonderful today. Today, what I got in store is be opening up this small little collection of Magic the Gathering cards. I'm kind of excited about this one. There's a whole bunch of foils inside of it. I did get this off eBay. Um, here is uh, the collection itself. I spent $44 on it and $11.75 for shipping. And it just has a bunch of foils and just looks like a really fun collection of cards. So yeah, I kind of splurged a little bit and ended up buying it in uh, the auction. So let's just go ahead and open it up and see what it's about. It does look like there's some like 7th edition foils and stuff like that. And those 7th edition foils are pretty sweet. Any of those white border sets that are foiled are always awesome because the foils, for whatever reason, are black border. Maybe it's just the process or something. But yeah, let's just see if we can cut this open gently. <laughs> There we go. And inside we go. I'm curious if there's any like... Okay, no paperwork or nothing. Cool with that. Liquid brush set, night. Not sure what that is. Liquid brush, maybe some makeup or something like that. Interesting, I thought it would have been like a small little, felt like almost like a fat pack box, but I guess. Just a random box. Let's see if we can get this open. Wow, this box is like perfect for cards. Put away the little knife, set it to the side, and let's just uh, go through them. Let me pull them out. There is a good amount of sleeved cards, it looks like. Ooh, they're cold <laughs> from the weather. Let's put this one here. Good amount of sleeved cards, good amount of non sleeve cards, definitely a little bit of curves to them, so you know they're probably foils. And, uh, box is empty. And then that's it. Let's just go ahead and separate them. I'm not sure if these were once decks or something like that. I'm not sure why some of them have sleeves, but they just look like, uh, sleeves. Looks like there's more green sleeves than any other ones. And a nice little pile of uh, non-sleeved. I guess let's just go down the line and see what we get. Let's start with the red color. I'm not sure if th these ones might not be foiled, actually. I'll be taking them out of the sleeves as well. Just because we got two Dark Steel uh, Citadel. Pretty good land. Uh, it's indestructible. Adds one to your mana pool. Can't get better than that. Artifact land. And it's an artifact land. Cool. Got... Dark Steel Ingot. It's an artifact. It's indestructible as well. Adds one color to mana pool. So it looks like maybe this is an artifact deck. Not sure what this is. This is like a. It's a rare from like Mirrodin, I believe. Greg Staples. I think it's like Chinese or. I'm not quite sure what language it is. Set that there. Another Dark Steel Ingot. So it looks like this. Uh, the sleeves might be just um, decks or something like that. Did look like there was about a, a lot of foils on the picture though, so I'm sure there's foils in here. Got Roar of uh, Reclamation, five and two white. Each player returns all artifact cards from his or her graveyard to play to sorcery. Pretty powerful right there. I'm gonna set it in the pile right there. If there's any other foreign cards, I'll set them there. And I'm putting lands over there. Some thought cast, some affinity for artifacts. Let me just angle this down just a touch. So it definitely looks like an artifact deck. Wow, got a play set of um of thought casts. Not a bad card. It's got affinity for artifacts and draw two cards. So technically you could draw two cards for one blue mana if you had four artifacts. Pretty cool. Nice little common. Ooh, some artifact lands, some vault of whispers. It's an artifact land, adds black to mana pool. I don't know like how legal these are, but since it's an artifact land, I believe when they first came out, you could have played a regular land and an artifact land per turn, so you could pretty much have like two lands per turn, so they were pretty powerful. I'm pretty sure that's how they worked. And then I got uh, some seat, I got four seat of synod. It's a blue artifact land. Uh, it isn't a spell, adds blue to your mana pool. Very cool. We got we got fireball. Looks like they're all in order. And then the lands are coming up. Interesting. Green lands. Got fireball. Deals X damage divided evenly 
uh, rounded down among any number of target creatures and or players. In addition to cost to play Fireball, play one for each target beyond the first. So yeah, Fireball. I've seen crazy editions of Fireball. It's like XY red, just like crazy stuff like that. Like one XY red, I don't know. But yeah, Fireball, the first uncommons. Got a bunch of forests. What is this? Looks like a proxy card. <laughs> That's interesting. It was like a piece of paper of this card <laughs> in here. So I guess they're using it as a proxy or something. It's a forest. And another proxy. Second sunrise. I'm guessing these green ones are like proxies. Another second sunrise. Interesting. So just some random forests, some basic lands. Looks like we have some rare blue cards right here. Got two temporal uh, cascade. Really like the art. Very cotton candy kind of vibe. Looks like an elephant or just through like creature or tentacles or either tusks. Interesting blue and pink background. Uh, five and two blue. Choose one. Each player shuffles his or her hand and graveyard into uh, his or her library. Each player draws seven cards. Entwine for two. Choose both if you paid the entwine. Okay, interesting. So that's cool. You can kind of just uh, reshuffle everything in and just draw new cards. I like that. It is a rare. Got myself a couple, three, actually four, Thirst for Knowledge, and one of them is a foreign language card again. I'm not sure the language on this one. Maybe Chinese, but I'm really not sure of the characters. Got three other English uh, Thirst for Knowledge, two in a blue. Draw three cards and discard two cards from your hand unless you discard an artifact card from your hand. Interesting. So this is like, um, it, it reminds me of a discard card. Discard two cards unless you discard an artifact from your hand. Uh, interesting. So yeah, some extra drawing power. And if you discard an artifact, you can just uh, discard one less. This is an uncommon. Let's set this here. Got Chromatic Sphere bunch of these so this is definitely an artifact deck and definitely from like the Mirrodin um, era all of these cards pretty much have the same set symbol on them got four chromatic spheres one man it's an artifact it has one tap sacrifice it add one man of any color to your mana pool and draw a card so some card draw and some mana production very cool by Brian Snooty cool art this is a common. Looks like I have some more artifact lands, some great furnace, and a couple of them are as well uh, foreign language. Same art and everything by Rob Alexander. It's the red one. Isn't a spell. Adds red to your mana pool. Set those there in the foreign pile. And then it looks like we did end up getting a play set of the Dark Steel Citadel. I believe we had like two in the beginning. So they're just like all play sets of all of the artifact lands in this deck, which is pretty cool. Except maybe the green ones. Is there even green ones? And then more Vault of Whispers. Three of them are foreign language. So I believe that gets it like that. Does that mean there was five? Interesting, there was actually five of... Uh, the Vault of Whispers in this collection. So this deck was technically not legal. <laughs> Unless this was, yeah, no, not legal, interesting. And then two more of the Dark Steel Ingot. And then we got all these sleeves here, which I'll just kind of set to the side for now. And then we have a play set of the ingots as well. Very cool. All right, let's check out the silver one. Looks like this one does have some foils going on in it. I'm going to be setting separate piles for foils. We can just move this up a little bit. And yeah, let's just see what's inside of it. I really do like the old foiling. I think they're fantastic. Got Chartooth Cougar, five in a red. What is this? Uh, I can't think of the name of the Scourge. Uh, red. Gets plus one plus zero till end of turn. It's got mountain cycling. It's a four four by Tony Suzulo. It's got a tiny little Pringle chip curve. Pretty sure you can kind of get them to flatten out if you just take a little bit of time with it. Maybe put it under a heavy book or something. Got Chartooth Cougar. Maybe that'll be a fun video. See how you can unflatten them. Got Rock Jockey again. The same set. This is Scourge. You can, you can't play Rock Jockey if you played a land this turn. It's hard to pick up in the camera actually. Angle this down just a little bit more. 
um, or up. You can't play lands if you played Rock Jockey this turn. So either you can play a land or Rock Jockey, but you can't play both. By Glen Angus, it's a 3-3 three, three for two and a red. Really like the red foils on it. When it's like the light is reflecting on it, it's just all the colors of the rainbow, and I love it. Looks like we got uh, Flaming Gambit. Got the Gravestone up there, so you know it has a uh, flashback. X and a red. It's an instant speed. This is from uh, Torment, I believe. Uh, Flaming Gamut deals X to target uh, player. That player may choose a creature he or she controls and have Flaming Gamut deal that damage, uh, deal damage to it instead. So you can pay five and do it, have it deal five damage to a, a player. But if they say, you know what, take that five damage and redirect it to my creature, they can do that if they want. They can get rid of their creature. This is drawn by Donato Ginacola. Just like this beam smacking this poor creature. Looks like a whole bunch of red right here. Got Kamal's Siege 5 and 2 red. Is this some sort of hammer or something? Breaking up rocks, I can't tell. Deals 4 damage to target creature. It has thresholds. Instead, uh, it deals 4 damage to that creature and 4 damage to that creature's controller. By Don Hazeltine. Okay, so 4 damage for 7 mana is not that good. Uh, and then 4 mana to a creature and player for 7 is better, but still kind of expensive. Yeah. Very cool. It looks like a whole bunch of just older cards. This is from Invasion, I believe. Tribal Flames, 1 in a red. Sorcery deals X damage to target creature or player, where X is a number of basic land types among lands you control by Tony Suzulo. Uh, pretty cool, but I was never a huge fan cards that say they work with like the number of basic lands you control. I guess maybe inside of like a sliver deck or something it would work well. But other than that, it's just you're probably not going to have that many lands, uh, basic lands on the field to make it super worth it. But yeah, very cool. Interesting art. It's like some sort of spiky fingered alien holding some sort of sword or something just getting sprayed by this lava beam boom looks like we got a seventh edition foil right here and again the seventh edition the regular seventh edition cards are white border but the foils for whatever reason are black border so it's very cool and i believe they're some of the first foils that they've had uh one red sorcery deals one damage to each creature without flying by michael uh kolchik this guy's riding his horse, and the ground is shaking, hurting him. He's dropping his weapon, so you know he's feeling it. A whole bunch of cards you here. got Swelter, three and a red. It looks like this crazy creature just made out of, like, tusks and bones is just surrounded by fire by Ben Thompson. Very bizarre-looking arts of sorcery. Deals two damage to each of two target creatures. Okay, four damage. I mean, four mana to make it deal two damage to two creatures. That's... Okay, I still would rather have just like a basic shock or lightning bolt over that, as I'm sure some of you would as well. And you got Implode, is this an artifact destroyer? Nope, destroy land. Four and a red, destroy target land, and draw a card. Sorcery speed, I believe this is an uncommon from Planet Shift by Arnie Sweckle. It's hard to tell with some of these sets what's uh, the common and uncommon and, and uh, rare. But I think that's silver, so I'm going to set this here. Very interesting. All right, and we're on to the next one. Looks like I got a 7th edition Volcanic Hammer. Deals 3 damage to target creature or player. I remember this card a lot from when I was younger. For only 2 mana. Not too bad. It's like a little bit more expensive lightning bolt, but in a pinch. can become very handy. Ben Thompson drew that one. Then it looks like we got a Disorder. Interesting, there's like a... You can see like a, a line or something for one in a red. Deals two damage to each white creature and each player who controls a white creature. Interesting. So if you're playing against a white deck or something like that, it will just damage them across the board. This angel is just in pain by Glenn Angus. Seventh edition. And this is, uh, I think, an uncommon. I think so. Then it looks like we have a random 8th edition land. So that, like, yeah, uh, white border cards, but the foil edition will be the black border. But, man, this is a great-looking land. Absolutely fantastic. Love the greens, the fog, the two moons in the background. They're definitely in another system by Rob Eagleton. Beautiful land. Absolutely fantastic. That's great. Looks like I got a foil thought cast, which is sweet. Uh, four and a blue, affinity for artifacts, draw two cards. So you can technically draw two cards for one blue mana. Not too bad. It is a foil. 
Looks like we got, uh, this is from like one of the Urza's set, I think Urza's Destiny, but Splinter 2 and 2 green. Sorcery, remove target artifact from uh, the game. Search his controller's graveyard hand and library for all copies of that card. Remove them from the game. That player then shuffles his or her library. By Darren Batter. And looks like some Pyrexian creatures just getting taken out to sea or something. But interesting, you can pretty much take away the whole playset of a specific artifact card they have if you'd like. Looks like I got a card from like uh, Mercadian Masks. It's got Soul Channeling. Two in a black. Pay two life. Regenerate enchanted creature. So you enchant a creature with it. Pay two life to regenerate it. By D to Lizzie. Which is pretty good because in a pinch if you had no mana or something. You can still save it if you so want it to be. Cool to see an old foil like that in here. Another Torment. One and two black. Destroy target land. It has Threshold. Instead, destroy that land and Rancid Earth deals one damage to each creature and each player. Oh wow, so if you have a Threshold, it's going to ping everything for one as well. And uh, every player takes the damage. So that can be cool. By Critchelou. Looks like these warriors or something. These like dwarf creatures. Not sure what's in the background, but very cool. And that's from Torment. <coughs> Looks like I have a Pacifism Classic Card 7th Edition Foil 1 and a white. Enchant creature cannot a can't attack or block. Without warriors, there could be no war. So he makes the warrior take off his armor and stuff, and he's just walking into the fields fresh by Eric Peterson. Great card. Awesome to see that in foil. Got uh, some fairies. Got Thornwind Fairies 1 and 2 blue. By Rebecca Guai. It's a 1-1 one, one with flying. Tap. Have it deal 1 damage to target creature or player. So it's like a prodigal sorcerer. But fairy, tribal, and they're flying. And a little bit more expensive. But pretty cool. They got their green capes flying in the sky. She's always a fantastic artist. And this is from like Urza's. Uh, one of the Urza's Saga or Destiny. I can't remember. It looks like we got some more 8th edition swamps. Beautiful classic swamps right there. I really like the one with like the, the lotus or whatever. This, this kind of swamp flower is on it. Fantastic. This one I don't think was a deck. There's just a whole bunch of black mana in it. But the foils didn't match up with the rest of the cards in the kind of gray sleeves or silver sleeves. Wow, these are cool lands as well. I like the lands in this set. Just like crazy, just looks toxic. The sludge is coming out of these weird little smokestacks by Martina Pelakova. There we go. Got this here in the land pile. Looks like we got a rare land, which is cool. Blink Moth, Blink Moth Nexus. It's a land from, uh, I believe, Fifth or Dark Steel. Um, Tap that one your mana pool. One becomes a 1-1 one, one Blink Moth artifact creature with flying till end of turn. Or one tap. Uh, target Blink Moth gets plus one, plus one till end of turn. So that's cool. If you have multiple of these on the battlefield, you can turn one of them into a creature and then pump up that creature with the other ones. So pretty cool. By Brian Snooty. It is a rare land. Let's set that there. And then Wretch Mine is actually the card I was thinking of. As opposed to... Um, Thirst of Knowledge. Uh, this has target player discards two cards from his or her hand unless he or she discards an artifact card from his or her hand. And this one has draw three cards and discard two cards from your hand unless you discard an artifact card from your hand. So I feel like they're kind of similar in the way that they work. But I really like this card right here. Usually most of the time they're going to end up discarding two cards from their hand for two mana. Very cool. Some more swamps. More swamps. Very green looking backgrounds. Hulk, Hulk's planet. By Rob Alexander. Again, very toxic kind of looking world, but crazy cool picture. Another uh, Wretch Mind. Looks like I got a rare. Actually, maybe a couple rare. Got Dross Harvester. Man, the art on this is fantastic. Just look at those colors in the green. This is great. Very chrome looking. By Michael Stufen. Protection from white. At the end of your turn, you lose four life. Whenever a creature is put to a grave from play, you gain two life. Okay, for a 1 and 2 black for 4-4, four, four, that is protection from white. You lose 4 life every turn, but whenever a creature comes into play, you gain 2 life. So if this is in some sort of like sacrifice deck, or you're destroying a lot of your opponent's creatures, maybe it can be beneficial. But I uh, really like the art. Crazy looking. Alright, let's go. Oh wait, just a couple more. A couple more Mine Rots. Classic discard card right here. Uh, 
two and a black. Target player discards two cards from his or her hand. Very simple, really great. And it's the eighth edition, the white border. All these uh, sleeves are now set to the side. And let's check out the green deck. Got Seat of Synod. So it looks like another artifact sort of deck, maybe. Let's see. Some more of those. Interesting. A playset of these. Did we already have a playset of those? Interesting. So we're going to have eight. <laughs> Eight of these artifact lands now. Man, the art is sweet though by John Avon. Crazy looking thing. And now they're, we're about to have more play sets of more of the artifact lands. Set this with the Dark Citadel or Dark Steer Citadel. I believe I have six of those now. More thought casts. They definitely like these artifacts from back then. So much so that they made decks with multiples. <laughs> Okay, got more of the thought casts. Uh, somewhere. Let's see if we can find it. Whole bunch of thought casts. There we go. Got the mirror enforcer. Affinity for artifacts. I'm assuming we're gonna have a playset of a lot of these things. Yep, got a playset of mirror enforcer. Seven mana for a four four. Oh, but it has the affinity for artifacts, so technically you could play it for free if you had seven artifacts out, which is pretty cool by Greg Staples. And the lands even count as artifacts because they're artifact lands, so you could get this thing out possibly very quickly for very cheap and or free. I'm going to flip this over. Got another foreign card. Shrapnel Blast. It's additional... Uh, cost to play it, uh, sacrifice an artifact, deals 5 damage to target creature or player. Not too bad. Sacrifice an artifact, so maybe sacrifice a land or a mirror or something like that. 5 damage to creature or player. I still like Goblin Grenade way better for sacrifice kind of damage card, but very cool by Dave Dorman. Exploding. One of them is foreign. Frogmite. Looks like a bunch of Frogmites. A whole play set of Frogmites. This is going to be some sort of mirror deck, which is pretty cool. Four mana, Affinity for Artifacts. It's a 2-2. Two, two. So again, it's got Affinity for Artifacts. You could technically get, the, get this out for free if you had four Artifacts, which is pretty powerful. But uh, if you're just paying for it, four mana for a 2-2 two, two with nothing is not that good. But uh, yeah, by Treese Nielsen. Definitely some sort of frog-looking lizard creature. Hanging out on the ends of metallic grass. Very cool. like the art from that set. Got Disciple of the Vault. Possibly get a play set of this. Yep, got a play set of this. Another shrapnel blast behind it. Got Disciple of the Vault. One black for a 1 1. Whenever an artifact is put into your graveyard from play, you may have target opponent lose one life. Oh, this, with this like affinity deck with all these artifacts, this, this deck could have been very powerful. Very cool by Matt Thompson. Like the purples floating things in the background. Pick your weapon. Another shrapnel blast. So it looks like a play set as well. One of them is foreign. Let's set this one here. Got Arcbound Worker, modular, so uh, it's a one mana creature that comes into play with a 1 1 counter on it, but when it dies, I believe you can move that 1 1 counter. What is it? This creature, this comes into play with a 1 1 counter on it. When it's put into a graveyard, you may put that 1 1 counter on target artifact creature. So you kind of, you can sacrifice this with that, with like something like this, and it'd be very beneficial, and you can put the counter on something else. Very cool. And then once this dies, uh, the Disciple will deal damage as well. So this deck has a lot of synergy. So the camera filled up real quick. Hopefully we caught those last couple cards from those uh, green sleeves. But I ended up just getting a whole bunch more of the artifact lands. And I ended up getting um, a couple of these Condescend. And I got a play set of the, the Mana Leak if you missed that. Anyways, we're going to be looking at all, all of these sort of uh, Z Golden Sleeves now. So let's see what we got here. Very cool right here. An 8th edition um, foil. I don't know if it's damaged or not or if that's normal to see that kind of shine right there. This is uh, Dan Frazier. 8th edition foil, 8th edition again is a white border set, but the foils for whatever reason are black border, so they're a little bit more sought after. Very cool, set that in the land pile. Some more um, foils, I mean more just basic lands from the Muradin, I believe. Very cool.
cool. Got uh, some dress from Urza's Saga, I believe. Very cool. Some old dress. You don't see this art too much. Well, I don't. I think of a different art. And he's just holding some interesting artifact. It's just kind of disappearing in his hands. He has like a look of abasement and a little bit of fear and surprise. One Black's a Sorcery by Lawrence Snelly. Uh, look at the target opponent's hand and choose a non-creature and online card from it. Disc uh, that player discards that card. So it's a very powerful card for one mana. Pretty sweet. Can't go wrong with that. Looks like we got a fall right here. What is this? Uh, Bo Bone Thorn Valisk. It's a beast. It's a beast of a creature. Is it spitting out this like blood or something? Or does it just have like this aura around it? Four in a red. Uh, it's a 4-2. Whenever a creature is turned face up, it deals one damage to target, creature, or player by Alan Palak. Interesting. No one... I don't really know many people who play with morph creatures, but maybe back when this came out, this was more of a thing. But very cool. And I believe this is from Scourge. Looks like some islands... Some nice looking islands from the um, Mirrodin. I believe that's the set, Mirrodin. Here we go. A whole bunch of them. Some of them just look wild. It's like uh, the structure is very fluid, very, very metallic, very kind of uh, just like mercury, just like liquid movement of metal. Fantastic by Martina Pelakova. It's great. Some of the islands we got. Set them in the land pile. So we got uh, right here two uh, energy chamber, some fifth dawn, I believe. Two mana, it's an artifact. At the beginning of your upkeep, choose one. Put a 1-1 one, one counter on target artifact creature. Or put a charge counter on target non-artifact creature. That's great. You can put charge counters on things, and then you can put counters on things. So if something has, like, modular, and then, like, it died or something, I believe... Uh, where is it? There's like a modular card or something like this. If you if you keep putting counters on it when it dies, you can move all those counters, which would be pretty cool. So uh, I really like that card. There's a whole bunch of synergy in a bunch of these cards. Nice little cards. Uncommon. I'll set that. Oh, I totally had an uncommon pile, but then I stopped doing it. There we go. So you got a couple rares. Got Magistrate's Scepter. Looks like you got a play set of those. Very cool from uh, Mercadian Masks. Nice to see some older rares. This is Artifact 3 mana. Very cool. I always like this art. It's just very fun feeling. Very festive. I don't know. Just like the colors. The oranges and the reds. It looks like they're in a town square or something. If 4 tap. Put a charge counter on Magistrate Scepter. Uh, tap. Remove 3 charge counters from Magistrate Scepter. Take an extra turn after this one. And if you want to, you could use the energy chamber to put counters on this to give yourself extra turns. So very cool and nice to see that. Place it of those. Looks like we got uh, some pented prism. Not really sure. Even more thought cast after. Got a place out of these. An artifact with sunburst. So I believe it comes into play with the amount of mana colors you use to spend on it. Remove a charge counter from it. Add one mana of any color to your mana pool. So it's a two uh, artifact. I mean two mana artifact. And uh, I guess if you use two different colors. It comes in with two counters. And you remove a counter. You can add a color. So interesting. And I guess you can use like the card like energy chamber to add more counters on later. By uh, David um, Martin. Cool art. Very prismatic. Very cool. Some even more thought casts. Gonna have like a million of those by the end of everything. If I can find them. Yeah, there's gonna be like 20 of those. <laughs> Looks like we have some counter spells. Very cool. Some uh, Tempest and Ice Age editions. Oh, nice. We got a play set, it looks like. Classic counter spell. Two blue mana counter target spell. Doesn't get easier than that. Really cool to see a play set of those. I'll set those up top. Looks like we got another uh, Vault of Whispers. So let's just add it to the pile of all of the artifact lands. Looks like another Dark Steel Ingot. Pretty cool. Let's see if I can. Uh, Put it with the other one. You're going to have a lot of these as well. A whole bunch of artifacts from this era. It's crazy. Looks like I got Triskellington. 
I remember this guy a little bit. Six mana for a 1-1. One, one. It comes into play with three 1-1 one, one counters on it, so it comes into play as a 4-4. Four, four. Remove a 1-1 one, one counter from it. Deals one damage to target creature or player. That's pretty cool. Uh, you can use its counters to deal damage by Christopher Moore. Look at that thing. It's just stabbing this poor creature like through the chest. Absolutely brutal. And you can use a card, I guess, like Energy Chamber to keep putting more counters on it to just make it deal more damage. Very cool. We got uh, Loxodon Mystic, 3 and 2 white. White, tap, tap, target creatures are 3-3 three, three by Edward P. Beard Jr. Got this sort of elephant clerk with a crazy looking staff. Almost looks like a cosmos around it. Very cool. And he looks angry. And ready to go. So we got some accumulated accumulated knowledges. Probably gonna be four of them because I know these ones work in conjunction with each other. Let's see, yeah, four accumulated knowledge, which makes sense. One in a blue. Draw a card, then draw cards equal to the number of accumulated knowledge in all graveyards. So obviously, if you had three of them in your graveyard and you play this, you draw a card plus three more for two mana. It can be very powerful as long as you have more and more in your graveyard. So pretty cool to see place out of that. I believe this is from Nemesis. Some even more thought casts. Looks like we're probably going to have a three because we found one earlier. Three thought casts again. So we're going to have so many. All this affinity. And then even more of the blue artifact lands. It looks like we're going to end up with a playset of the Seat of Synod. Usually I only have like one playset. For of like each card, then I'll move that throughout my decks. It looks like this person had multiple playsets for multiple of their decks. Let's just look. I have like a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 12 of these. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I had 6 of those. So it's just, there's just a lot of them. <laughs> They're pretty cool. And that is all of the kind of golden sleeves. And the next thing we're going to do is just the unsleeved one. So let's check that out. And then we're on to the unsleeved pile. So far, not that many foils. I was expecting a lot more. Maybe the picture was a little bit misleading, but we will see. Looks like I have some unsleeved stuff. It's a little bit easier to go through. I got Shattered Dreams, one black. It's a sorcery. Target opponent reveals his or her hand. Choose an artifact card from it. That player discards that card. So it's like a duress, but I would say a little bit worse because it only targets artifacts, but the art is fantastic. It looks like... In this situation, the artifact was a sword, and she dropped the swords, getting rid of the sword by Greg Staples. Sweet art, though. I really like it. An uncommon from Fifth Dawn, I believe. Looks like we got um, Ebon, Ebon Drake. Man, the art from, like, the Fifth Dawn, this artifact kind of era, is just great. Love the greens. The use of the greens fantastic. Two and a black. It's flying. It's a 3-3. Three, three. Whenever a player plays a spell, you lose one life. Okay, three mana for a through through with flying, but the downfall like that, hmm, I don't know. We'll see how that goes by Pete Ventures. Don't like how you lose a life, though. Looks like I got uh, three a Vicious Hunger. He's very hungry. He looks like he's going to eat this guy's brain like a zombie, and he looks clueless. Two black, it's a sorcery, eighth edition, just two damage to target creature. You gain two life, so he damages something and then eats something and gains something. Cool. Oh, and then we have another one from just a different edition. And it looks like there is some more uh, foils. It looks like actually a foil rare from Scourge. Ambush Commander, 3 and 2 green. Force you control are 1 1 green elf creatures that are still lands. Oh my, that's fantastic. Your force become 1 1 green elf creatures. Talking about elf tribal to the max, this is great. One of the green sacrifice an elf target creature gets plus 3 plus 3 to end of turn. By Daryl Ritchie, it's a 2 2 for 5 mana. This is a fantastic card. For whatever reason, it reminds me of Deranged Hermit a little bit, but this is great. That's sweet to have that. Nice little rare. Cool. And looks like we have, oh, oh we even have uh, some that are just non-foil. We have two more that are non-foil. Very cool. That's great. I think that's a sweet card right there. And then it looks like we have uh, Larceny from uh, Mercadian Mask. Three and two black. Looks like this giant goblin green guy just literally have this poor guy in a chokehold. And he's having him take his money or something like that. Enchantment, whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, that player discards a card from his or her hand. Whenever a creature you control... Interesting, so if you deal any damage through, they have to discard a card by Dave Dorman. That's cool. That's great enchantment. 
And this is just a common, but very cool. Another 7th edition Orcish Artillery. 1 and 2 red. It's a creature orc. You have it tapped to do 2 damage to target creature and 3 damage to you. So if you need to get damage across, you can. But they're not very smart about it. Look, he has like the wheel on his back. So they're going to hurt you too. They're going to hurt you a little bit more by Dan Frazier. But very cool. 7th edition foil. Looks like you got Enslaved Dwarf. Crazy looking art by Therese Nielsen. It's just like a chain is just, he's being dragged by a chain. One red, it's a creature dwarf, uh, one one. Uh, pay red, sacrifice it, target black creature gets plus one, plus zero, and gains first strike till end of turn. Interesting, so it's only for a black creature. But you can give plus one to first strike, so pretty cool, can kind of use it as removal if you need. We got Longhorn Fire Beast, two and a red, it's a creature beast, it's a three two. Glenn Angus drew it. Can't really tell what's going on. You can just see this crazy fiery mess and a little bit of horns kind of in the middle of it. Uh, when Longhorn Fire Beast comes into play, any opponent may have it deal 5 damage to him or her. If their player does, sacrifice it. Okay. It's a uh, 3 mana for a 3-2. And if it comes into play, someone may pay have it deal 5 damage to them. If they do sacrifice it, I don't think anyone would pay 5 though. Very bizarre. Looks like we got um, Crazed Fire Cat, 5 and 2 red. When it comes into play, flip a coin. If you lose a flip, put a 1-1 counter on it. For each flip, you win. Oh, until you lose. Oh, that's interesting. So you just keep flipping until you lose. And if you won 10 in a row, this thing is just huge. So 5 and 2 red for a 4-4 four four that comes in with other things. Ron Spears drew it. Interesting. It's just a fire beast. They can't even look at it. It's so hot on their eyes. Looks like a shield wall. Beautiful. Look at the just the foiling on it. It's just so rainbow, so prismatic. I love it. One in a white. Creatures you control get plus zero, plus two until end of turn. Instant speed shield wall by Adam Rex. Some seventh edition awesomeness. Love those older foils. I'm a huge fan of them. What do we got here? We got Swirling Sandstorm. Three in a uh, red sorcery. And it only works with threshold. Uh, deals five damage to each creature without flying. Powerful. You need Threshold, but for 4 mana, 5 damage to each creature without flying, that's pretty much a board wipe by Tony Suzulo. A board wipe for 4 mana, not too bad. As Dust sweeps out, uh, Vultures sweep in. Very cool. That's from Judgment. So we got a 7th edition of Lava Axe right here. I remember this one from when I was younger. I like to have f 4 of these in my deck and hopefully just hit them for all 4 and win. 4 in red, deals 5 damage to target creature. Catch by Ray Lago. He's just throwing this magical axe at you. It's Chandra's friend. We got Pyrexian Denouncer. Creepy looking art. It's a summon carrier. It's a 1-1 one, one for 1 and a black. You tap, sacrifice it. Target creature gets negative 1, negative 1 till end of turn. So 2 mana for 1-1 one, one that has tap, sacrifice it. Uh, negative 1 and 1 target creature. It's okay. By Brian Snooty. But creepy art. I like that better. That's from uh, one of the Urzas. We got Crown. A suspicion, one in a black. It's enchant creature. Enchant creature gets plus two, negative one. Sacrifice it, and enchant creature and other creatures that share creature type with it uh, get plus one, negative one till end of turn. Okay, darkness hides my fear by Wayne England. Creepy looking art. So some more foils. What do we got here? We got three maggot carriers. I always thought this art was creepy. Ron Spencer drew it's like uh, some sort of creature or just zombie covered in maggots when it comes into play each player loses one life so it's just a maggot it's like a maggot thing what do we got here we got some more we got consumed spear we got four of them x a one and a black spend only black on x consume spirit deals x damage to target creature play you gain x life so can deal damage to something and you gain that much love the greens and the yellows by Matt Thompson. Very cool. Got myself a ravenous rat. This is probably one of my favorite rats. Just because when it comes into play, target opponent discards a card from your hand. It's a creature that can be used to block and attack and makes him discard a card. Come on, it just doesn't get better than that. It'd be cool to have a foil one of those. That would be great. What do we got here? We got a foil afterlife from Mercadian Masks. Two and a white. Destroy target creature. It cannot be regenerated. A controller puts a 1-1 one, one white spear creature token with flying onto the battlefield. Interesting. Destroy a creature, and they get a 1-1 one, one for 3 mana. Not too bad. And if you wanted to, you could do it to yourself. does have a little bit of a bend, this one, if you can kind of see. But 
He gives it some culture. Is that a, is that an uncommon? I don't know. It's hard to tell. Got hindering touch. Three and a blue counter target spell unless his controller plays two and it has storm. Interesting. By Glenn Angus Druid. Interesting art. Looks like he's underwater or something and the sun is hitting him and turning him into something else. But yeah, from Scourge, some counter spell action. What do we got here? Got uh, Withering Hex. Just this man walking through the swamps with a staff. Where is he going? What's he doing? No one knows. Enchant creature. It's an uncommon, I believe. It's a one black. Uh, whenever a player cycles a card, put a play counter on Withering Hex. Enchanted creature gets negative one, negative one for each play counter on Wandering Hex. So I guess you put on your opponent's creature and hope that they have a cycling deck by Greg and Tim Hildebrandt. Very cool. What do we got? He got Insubordination, uh, two black. It's an enchant creature. Uh, at the end of turn of enchanted creature's control, uh, in subordination, deals two damage to that player unless Enchanted Creature attack this turn. So it makes that creature want to attack, and if they don't, they take two damage by Andrew Goldhawk. Cool art. Looks like he's in some sort of bank vault or something. Some eerie smoke coming out there. Very cool. Arcadian masks. Love those older foils. They're just fantastic. By Maggot Therapy. His arms are just glowing maggots. They're giving him the strength. By Jeff Easley. Two and a black. You may play Maggot Therapy. Anytime you can play an instant, an enchant creature gets plus two, negative two. Uh, cool. So you can use it as removal if you want as well. I like that. Just this clown-looking guy with his maggot arms and his axe. Boom. Got Pyrexian Debaser. Foil from one of the uh, Urzas. Th I think Judgment. Three and a black summon carrier has flying. You tap it, sacrifice it, give a creature negative two, negative two, till end of turn. So it's a two-two. Flying for four. That you can give something negative two, negative two by Mark Tendon. Just the foiling is fantastic. Looks like we got a fanatic uh, purification from uh, Torment. Two and a white. Destroy target enchantment and it's madness cost. So it's got madness. If something causes you to discard it, you can pay it for one. Instant speed by Bark Brill. This old sorcerer with a beard as long as himself. Holding up his staff. Shooting lightning everywhere. We got uh, Chastise, three and a white, instant destroy target attaching creature. You gain life equal to its power. Nice little instant right there. Destroy a big creature, gain its power. Got Umra's Cure, one and a white, instant if you control a plane. So you may tap and untap creature control instead of paying its mana cost. Wow. Prevent the next four damage would be dealt to target creature play this turn. So I like cards with alternate cost and this has one. By uh, Don Hazeltine. And there's just a guy with a crazy sword in the background. And he's just holding up his hand to him. Telling him to stop. And I think he's doing it. What do we got? We got Lead Astray. One and a white. Tap up to two target creatures. Instant speed. That's fun right there. I like cards you can tap them. By Adam Rex. And it looks like just the landscape. This big old creature is just grabbing this like giant chicken by the head. <laughs> Wild. Another Afterlife. Destroy target here. Yep, I believe we had that, but I think a different art. Let's see. Oh, no, same art. So we got two of the afterlife foils. One of them had a little bit of the bend in it, so we got a better one. What do we got here? We got Goblin Masons. Looks like they're masonry. He's literally, or they're putting bricks together, and he stuck a skull in it. <laughs> Creative by D. Tlizzy. One in a red, so two one. When it's put into a grave from play, destroy target wall. So when he dies, he's upset and he takes the wall with him. Fun art. He just looks like a Picasso or something strange. Just got a sad look on his face. <laughs> he put books up there too. I like that. We got um, Weather Seed Fairies. Very cool. Love the old fairies. Two and a blue. It's a 2 1. Flying protection from red. Can't be lightning bolted by Hazeltine. Very cool. Like seeing stuff like that. Got Cho Aram Legate. Two and a white protection for black. It's a one two. If the opponent controls a swamp, you may, and you control a plane, you can play it without paying its mana cost. So if you're playing against a black deck, this thing has protection for black, and you can pretty much play it for free. Interesting. She has like banners instead of wings or something. And look at her fingers. They're really long and pointy. By Arcade Post. Got a Devout Witness. Two and a white creature spell shaper. One white tap. Discard a card from your hand. Destroy target artifact or enchantment. Okay. Got a very serious look on her face by Dan, Don Hazeltine. It's a 2-2 two, two for 2 and a white. 
like a either rare or uncommon, hard to tell. Ivy Seer, these old foils are awesome. These ones are pretty straight. A three and a green, so one, one. Two green, reveal any number of green cards in your hand. Target creature gets plus X plus X on a turn where X is number of cards revealed this way. So that's cool. If you have a whole bunch of green cards, you can give some a lot of power. She has a very strange shaped head and her ears kind of just melt in there, but cool art by Donato Aginacola. Uh, I think that's an uncommon, can't tell. Looks like we got another uncommon or rare, I'm not sure. Hunting Moa, probably an uncommon. Two and a green. It has Echo, so you got to pay its cost twice. Uh, the next turn, three, two, uh, comes into play. Or is put into a graveyard from play. Put a 1-1 one, one counter on target creatures. So it comes in with a little bit of strength. And it's just like a giant bird trying to catch other birds <laughs> in his mouth by D. Lizzie. Makes me think of prehistoric times and just in yellow flowers as well. Very cool. I think that's an uncommon. Got uh, Wirewood Guardian. It's got four cycling for two. It's a 6-6 six, six or five and two green. I just love these old foils from Scourge by Mark Tendon. Just this beast of a creature. He's huge and he's kind of, he looks kind of dopish or something. And he got these two smaller ones. They're saying, come this way, come this way. And you can just, I can hear him just grumbling and not know what's going on. Very fun. I like that. We got uh, a Swamp from, I uh, can't remember the set, but Basic Swamp. Very cool. By Anthony S. Waters. Can't go wrong with that. Got Crown of Flames. Looks like he's screaming, maybe in pain, or he's just making noise. One red by Christopher Moyer. Uh, Enchanted creature gets plus one plus zero until end of turn. Return it to its owner's hand. Okay. From Invasion. What is this? We got sl sluggishness. This poor guy is tired, needs some water. He's lost in the desert. One in a red is enchant creature. Enchant creature cannot block. Whenever sluggishness is put into a grave from play, return sluggishness to his owner's hand. So just keeps on coming back. Poor guy is looking pretty tired. And down the line we go. Looks like the next card I got is a consumptive goo i've never even seen or heard of this card but the art is fantastic just looks like a creepy looking pile of just like bones and snot and like some sort of cobwebs very creepy it's carl critchlow drew it fantastic it's a rare from scorch it's a one one creature for two black two and two black target creature gets negative one negative one till end of turn put a one one counter on consumptive goo interesting so you can kind of deal damage and get it stronger this goo just keeps on going I really like the art on that one for whatever reason, even though it's nasty. Looks like you got another... Ooh, we got a couple of these. Got two foil uh, Dark Watch Elves for one of the... I think this is an uncommon. 2-2 two, two by Hazeltine Druid. It's a two and a green protection from black and cycling. So murder can't be happening to it, and you can cycle it if you want. Pay two, discard this card from your hand, draw a card. Play it as an instant. So a nice little two sets of those, maybe for the elf tribal they're doing. Is this uncommon? Possibly. It's hard to tell with some of these. I think that these are uncommon. I think that these are... I don't know. We'll see. And it looks like I got Spitting Grana. It's like an anteater spitting at this bird in the sky. Three and two green. It's a three, four. It can block as though it had flying, so it has reach. You can tell because it's spitting the bird out of the sky. It has more for four and a green. Play it face down as a two, two creature for three. Turn it up any time for its morph cost. Okay. By Heather Hudson. I always like this arch. It's like a giant anteater spitting a bird out of the sky. Got a ravenous rat again. Got a couple. A playset of a blind creeper. One in a black. Whenever a player plays a spell, uh, gets negative one, negative one till end of turn. So two mana for a 3-3. Three, three. That's not too bad for a zombie beast. This could be great in um, some of my zombie decks. Two mana for a 3-3 three, three zombie. Oh yeah, that's awesome. I really like that. I didn't know that existed. Looks like we got... A play set of Dark Banishings, or Dark Banishing. A two and a black, destroy a target non-black creature. It cannot be regenerated. Instant speed, destroy any creature. can't be regenerated as long as it's not black. By Dimitri Power. Some white border 8th edition stuff right here. Looks like we have some uh, multicolor rares. I love these old multicolors from, on, uh, what is it? Odyssey, I really like that set as well. One, a blue and a black. It's a creature wizard. It's a 1-3 by Rick Farrell. A Shadow Mage Infiltrator cannot be blocked except by artifact creatures and or black creatures, so it has fear. Whenever Shadow Mage Infiltrator deals common damage to a player, you may draw a card. So you get some card draw as well. So it has fear and uh, draw a card when it gets through. Pretty cool right there. Interesting blue cape. He's just pointing at you. 
Very cool. Nice little rares right there. Looks like we got another rare right here. Door to Nothingness. I remember this card. Fifth edition. When it comes into play tapped, you pay uh, 10 mana, two of every type. Uh, sacrifice it. Target player loses the game. Very powerful ability right there. If you pay all that mana, you can make them lose the game. Just sucked into the void by putting head. <laughs> Interesting. Some fifth edition, right? No, uh, fifth dawn. What is this? Primitive etchings. Looks like the tree has some green energy etchings on them. Two and two green. It's an enchantment. Reveal the first card. You draw each turn. Uh, whenever you reveal a creature card this way, draw a card. That's cool. So you put this in a creature heavy deck, you could be drawing just like twice. By David Martin. Very cool card right there. Never heard of that one. What is this? We got Parallel Thoughts, 3 and 2 blue, and it's an enchantment. Whenever Parallel Thoughts comes into play, search your library for 7 cards, remove them from the game, and face down pile, then shuffle those pile, uh, then shuffle your library. If you would draw a card, you may instead put the top card of your pile, uh, you remove it into your hand. So, okay, you set aside 7 cards, and you can kind of draw from them by Ben Thompson. He's like a water creature. It makes me think of Futurama when he drinks the water people and becomes like their leader. <laughs> We got Nefishu. I don't know how you pronounce that. Zombie Mutant for four and two blacks of five, three. Whenever it attacks, up to five target creatures each get negative one, negative one until end of turn. That's pretty cool right there. He's pretty strong. He probably has five hands in there and he each deals the damage with them. By RK Post, brutal looking card right there. What is this? This is a card that has seen a little bit of beaten upness. Jointer Adept. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is a pretty good card right here. One in a green. Lands you control have tap. Add one man of any color to your mana pool. It's a 2-1. And it gives all your lands pretty much... Uh, they can become any land. This is a great, great card right here. It's an elf tribal as well. Cool arch. It's just got like the energy of the lands coming from her arms. The trees are giving it to her. But it has a little bit of, of a bent damage to it. But still, cool to see that. We got Raven Guild Master. One and two blue. He's made out of lightning. It's a wizard mutant. It's a 1-1. One, one. Kev Walker drew it. Uh, deals combat damage to a player. That player removes the top 10 cards from his or her library from the game. Wow. So just 10 cards gone. And you can morph it and turn it up and hit him with it. Very cool. It is a rare from Scourge. Got upwelling. So it looks like there's a whole bunch of non-foil rares as well. Three and a green. Mana pools don't empty during their... Uh, end of phases or turns. It's an enchantment, so all your mana stays there. If you only got three mana, just tap it one turn, and the next turn tap it again, you have six. John Avon, very cool. But I think that works for your opponents as well. What do we got here? We got uh, Force Bubble. Two and two, a white enchantment. If a damage will be dealt to you, put that many depletion counters on Force Bubble. When there are four more depletion counters on it, sacrifice it. At the end of turn, remove all depletion counters on it. So if it's four or more damage per turn, uh, this thing dies. But if it's less than that, it's just going to keep taking it. Very cool. So it's like a shield it's just absorbing all this energy. Very cool. What do we got here? We've got Dragon Tyrant. Eight and two red. Ten men. It's a dragon for six six. It's got Flying Trample and Double Strike. Ooh, that's brutal. So it can hit you for 12. At the beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice it unless you pay 4 red, so it's brutal. And you can pump it up for red. Pay red gives it plus 1, plus 1 until end of turn. Kev Walker. This dragon is crazy. It can be hitting them for however much you want to pay to it as well. It has double strike. It has trample. It has flying. If it had a haste, though, that would be the kicker right there. But you got to pay 4 red every turn and 10 mana. That's crazy. What is this? Eternal dragon. Ooh, some more dragons. 5 and 2 white flying. Three and two white return it uh, from your grave to your hand. Place ability only during your upkeep. And it's got plane cycling. Five, five. It can kind of come back by Justin Sweet. And it just looks like he's made out of the clouds and the sun itself. Very cool. It's a bunch of dragons, it looks like. Got dragon mage. Five and two red. So seven flying. As it deals combat damage, uh, each player discards his or hand and draws some card. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player... That each player, okay, so if it deals damage, everyone discards their card, their hand, and draws them. It's like Wheel of Fortune in a dragon. Very wild. By Matthew D. Wilson, it's a 5-5. Five, five. That's crazy. I don't know some of these cards. Got Decree of Savagery. What is he doing? He's doing that, like, dance that people do now. <laughs> I don't even know. 7 and 2 green. Put 4 woman counters on each creature control. Wow. Cycling for 4 and 2 green. Whenever you cycle it, you may put 4 woman counters on target creatures. Okay, so cycling has a powerful ability as well. By Alex Horley Oriandel Deli. Very cool. Bunch of Scourge rares. What do we got here? Got 
Mahifidros Vampire, don't even know, 4 and 2 blacks at 3-4, flying, each creature control is a vampire in addition to other creature types, and has when this creature dies, uh, deals damage to a creature, put a 1-1 counter on it, so wow, they all become uh, vampires that just get stronger and stronger when they deal damage to creatures, it's not when that creature dies, it's when they deal damage, it's powerful, by Matthew D. Wilson, 6 mana for 3-4 with flying, that gives all your other creatures that ability, it's pretty sweet, so I got Quicksilver Behemoth, the random card right here. He's got the energy inside of him. Affinity for artifacts. When it attacks or blocks, return it to his owner's hand in the combat. It's a 5 4 for 6 and a blue that can go out there for possibly 1 blue if you're lucky. What do we got? We got another Consumptive Goo. Very cool. Let's find the other one. Put it with it. Zigoo card. Another Shattered Dreams. I believe we had some of that. I think that means this have a place set now. We have four Shattered Dreams, and then we have more foils, it looks like. Pay no heed. One white. It's an instant speed. Prevent all damage. The source of your choice would deal this turn. So it's like a fog, but only for one thing by Adam Rex. And preventing that damage. What do we got? Here we got a do, 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 Thundercloud Elemental. It's like a giant fish in the sky or something. Five and two blue. It's got flying. Uh, three blue. Tap all creatures with toughness two or less. Three blue. All other creatures lose flying till end of turn. That's cool. So you can pretty much pay four, make all the creatures lose flying, and you know you're going to get the damage through, unless they have reach. Or you can tap all creatures with toughness two or less. So all the little guys just get tapped. It's three, four, but Anthony S. Waters. Cool card. Love the foiling on it. That's a uncommon. Looks like a judgment. Flash of insight. He's got a crazy look on his head. He figured it out. The Eureka moment. X of one and a blue. Instant. Look at the top X cards of your library. Put one of them in your hand, and the rest of the bottom of your library... And then you have a flashback. It's a very cool bit. Ben Thompson, Judgment card right there. Beautiful Swamp from Mirrodin. Love the Greens by Mark Tendon. Another Flash of Insight. Two of those. Looks like we got uh, Bringer of the Green Dawn. Again, the mana cost in the kind of text is uh, colorless, which is strange. Seven and two greens at 5-5. Five, five. You may pay one of each color rather than pay its mana cost. It has trample. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may put a 3-3 three, three green beast creature token into play. So wow, you can pay this for five mana if you have all the colors. So throw this in a sliver deck. And then this thing is going to be pumping out 3-3 three, three beast creature tokens. That's sweet. By Jim Murray. It's like a crazy looking, what is it? Rhino the Bringer. <laughs> Looks like it's made out of like uh stone or something emerald or something crazy or jade it's a rare what is this here we got um all sun's dawn four and a green sorcerer for each color return up to one target card of that color from your grave with your hand then remove all sun dawn from the game for each color okay so i guess for each mana color very cool i like the art as well it's like these marbles floating in the sky very kind of like space feeling mixed with like Plants in the Forest, very cool, by Glenn Angus. Looks like we got a Sun Crasher, 9 mana. I haven't heard or seen lots of these cards. I don't know them. Artifact Creatures got Sunburst, 4 tap, remove a 1-1 counter, destroy target creature, 2, remove a 1-1 counter from it, return it to its owner's hand. Okay, so you can save it and destroy creatures with it. So 3-3 three, three comes into play for each, with counters for each color used to play by Dave Dorman. Those crazy artifacts from that whole era. What do we got here? We got a couple of these. We got uh, Dawn Element, Elemental. Four whites. Got flying. Prevent all damage will be dealt to Dawn Elemental. So 3-3. Three, three. Look at the art, though, by Anthony S. Waters. It's very sweet looking. Very watercolor. -y. Love the colors. Very prismatic y, crystal y. Sweet looking. Really like it. What do we got here? We got uh, Blade Wing the Risen. Don't even know. It's a dragon legend. It's a 4-4 four, four for 3, 2 black, and 2 red. Creature, dragon legend, sweet flying. Does that mean it's legendary? Probably. When blade wing the the Ryzen comes into play, you may return target dragon from uh, your graveyard to play. Oh, that's awesome. He brings a dragon into play with him. And you can give all dragons plus 1, plus 1 till end of turn for red and a black. That's sweet. This is awesome. He's like a skull dragon. He's got that red in his little skull eyes. But he still has a tongue. That's sweet. Didn't know that existed. So we got another foil. We got Avon Trooper 3 and a white. Interesting art. How like the sun is just the only thing you see in the background. This is a samurai kind of bird looking thing. I absolutely love it. By Greg Stables. It's a 1-1 one, one for 3 and a white. So it's expensive. Flying. 2 and a white. Discard a card from your hand. Gets plus 1, plus 2 till end of turn. 
Nah, that's kind of crazy. Four mana for a 1-1 one, one that you got to discard a card to give it power. Not my favorite, but I really like the art. What is going on here? This is a Legions uh, Uncommon. A Daru a Mender. One white. It's a creature cleric for a 1-1 one, one with a morph. When it's turned faced up, regenerate target creature. So when you turn it up, you can save someone. Looks like uh, a warrior. Just an explosion in the background being saved. What do we got here? We got more. We got uh, Ignorable uh, Soldier. Two and a white. Whenever the soldier becomes blocked, prevent all combat damage that we dealt to it, uh, dealt by this turn. Okay. It's a 3-1. That just ignores damage by Mark Romanovsky. Very cool. What do we got here? The next one we got Obsidian Acolyte bending the sludge around him or something. One in a black. Protection from black. The art represents that because he's just like taking the black energy and using it. Uh, white target creature gains protection from black till end of turn. So just like the picture, he's saving the child. 1-1 uh, one, one for a 1 and a white by Matthew D. Wilson. This is pretty cool. He had this on the battlefield and you have a free white mana floating so whenever someone tries to play murder or something you can just use it. Definitely a little scratch in it, but very cool. What do we got here? Avian Liberator. Two and two white. It's a flying bird soldier with morph. When it's turned face up, target creature control gains protection from the color of your choice on the turn. And it's a 2-3 by Brian Snooty. Very cool picture. Looks like there's a battlefield and this crazy bird is just about to come and grab somebody. Creepy. Looks like we got a uh, foil from uh, Shadowmore. One of these sets. I don't remember, but crazy set. Elsewhere Flask. Fun name. Looks like it has a tie on it. Two mana. Artifact. When it comes into play, draw a card. Sacrifice it. Choose a basic land type. Each land you control becomes a type until end of turn. That's cool. So if you need an extra black mana and you only have one out and the rest are red, you can sacrifice it and make all the other ones black. Very cool. By Carl Frank. Cool to see that. There's just really a whole bunch of foils in here. I'm excited. Got Gifter's Blade. Three mana artifact equipment. It's an uncommon from like Ravnica or something. You may play it anytime. You can play an instant. It's got Flash. Comes into play. Equip creature of your choice. Uh... So it comes into play, attaches something, and when it's attached, it gets it plus one, plus one. So Alan Palak drew its equipped cost is one as well. So it can pretty much be a removal if you want getting extra damage there. Just looks like a giant person standing outside of, like, the doorway. Wild. What do we got here? We got uh, Swell Swore Brute. One in a red. It's a human mercenary. It's a 2-2. Two -two. When it's put into a graveyard from play, it deals two damage to you. So when he dies, he hurts you. <laughs> what a jerk. By Jeff Beercola. What do we got? We got brain spoils, creepy looking art, just the pain and the agony. It's just this green stuff is spraying out of his ears. Three and two black to restore a target creature that isn't enchanted. It can't be regenerated and has transmute for one and two black. Discard this card, switch your library for the same converted mana cost as this card. Reveal it, put in your hand, and shuffle your library. So that's cool. You can tutor up for any other card that costs five mana. Brain spoils. Oh, nice. I like this card. We got tranquility, two and a green, destroy all enchantments, sorcery speed. Nice little Invasions um, foil by Rob Alexander. Fantastic. What do we got here? We got Invigorating Falls, Rebecca Guay. She's a fantastic artist. You got these fish kind of jumping there. She's either bathing herself or washing her hands. And the fish are just uh, cool. Almost like a yin-yang formation. Two and two green. You gain life equal to the number of creature cards in all graveyards. So the more creatures are in graveyards, the more life you gain. So... If someone's trying to go for the card like Mortal Kombat, you're trying to go for this card, you probably gain a lot of life. Rebecca Guai, very cool. Looks like an uncommon Aether Charge, four and a red. Enchantment. Uh, whenever a beast comes into play under your control, you may have it deal four damage to target opponent. So put this in a beast tribal deck. You'd be playing beasts all the time and dealing four damage to everything. This crazy long dragon neck or something. That's wild. These like bodies behind the mountain just sticking out there. Boom, gonna eat them. A Mark Brill. What do we got here? We got uh, Deconstruct. This elf artificer is doing something. Two and a green sorcery. Destroy target artifact and add three green to your mana pool. That's pretty cool. I like cards that have this kind of ability where it has an ability, but then it gives you the amount of mana that you pretty much spent on it. So it's almost like a free card as long as you have the mana open by D. Alexander Gregory. Very cool. Actually, this is an uncommon. We got a island from the Ravnica. A Forest from Ravnica, a swamp from I believe Ravnica, and then we got uh, Lava Mancer's skill. Very interesting by 
Monty Michael Moore. Enchant creature has tapped. This creature deals one damage to target creature. If Enchanted Creatures Wizard has tapped, this creature is two damage target creature. So it turns up into like Prodigal Sorcerer, but also a little bit stronger if it's a wizard. I'm trying to see something. I'm pretty sure that this guy in this art was on a red card, and I want to see it. Yeah, dude, that is him. I'm pretty sure that this is the same person. <laughs> Maybe. Okay, cool. Just a couple more cards left. Very small little pile left. Got Manacle Rage. Uh, one in a red. Enchant creature gets plus two, plus two, and can't block. So he's crazy. He can't block. He's just pummerizing everything. He's just beating up these crazy monsters by Mac Voda. What do we got here? We got Arcane Teachings. Two in a red. He's got his cool feather. He's got his 20-sided die, and he's ready. Enchanted creature gets plus two, plus two, and has tap. Creature deals one damage to target creature or player. So it's a little bit worse than this. <laughs> That's funny. What do we got here? Defender of Chaos. So he defends the Chaos. Two in a red. Protection from white. You may have, you may play Defender of Chaos anytime you play an instant. So it's got Flash by Carl Crisolo. It's a 2-1. Cool night stuff right there for that night tribal. We've got Conclave's Blessing. Three and a white Convoke. Enchant creature. Uh, enchant creature gets plus zero, plus two for each other creature you control. So this thing can be huge if you have like a bunch of like just like zombies on the field or something. Very cool. Hard to tell what's going on in the picture. It really is. What do we got here? We got uh, Lore Broker. One in a blue. It's a human rogue. It's an uncommon. Tap. Each player draws a card, then discards a card. So everyone loots. Very cool for one, two by Ellen Pellet. What do we got here? We got some sort of a slay. I believe it's an uncommon. Two and a black. Instant destroy target green creature. It can't be regenerated. And draw a card by Ben Thompson. Cool looking art. All these poor white warriors are just being taken up by this crazy... Pyrexian Warlord or something. And the last card I got for this collection is Ray of Distortion from Odyssey. Three and a white instant destroy target artifact or enchantment and flashback for four and two white by Carl Crisolo. So just this Ray is boom, melting the sword, making it useless. Very cool, very cool. Anyways, it was a fun little collection to check out. I did get a bunch of foils. I did get like so many of these artifact lands it's unreal i don't know what i'm going to do with them all i did get a nice little pile of rares some cool stuff right here for sure some of the cards did have a little bit of wear on them but most of them were pretty clean but really cool to see just some older rares and stuff and then the reason i really bought this collection is because uh just these older foils i'm a huge fan of these older foils and i just think they look uh they look gorgeous. <laughs> I really do. It got a nice little pile of uncommon ones. And then I think I did get just one uh, rare foil. But very cool. In a couple of these lands as well. But anyways, this is a fun little collection to open up and check out. I know these videos are a bit longer, but I just really enjoy them. And I hope you do the same. I want to say thanks for stopping by. Hope you're all doing safe and staying positive out there. Keep on keeping on. And I'll catch you all on the next one.